And uh, welcoming now to our newsmaker line, Stu Bend County District Attorney Brooks Baker. Brooks Baker, thank you for calling in. Morning, Brian. Always great to be with you in the morning. Well, uh, District Attorney Baker, um, I have the uh, I've printed out the list from the Syracuse Post on the uh, the ten pieces of legislation that will reform New York State police departments across the state. It's not just the state police; it's all police departments statewide. Um, want to start out with the first one that they list here from the Syracuse Post: opening up disciplinary records. Uh, the personnel uh, records of police officers, firefighters, and corrections officers, it said, uh, would be subject to uh, FOIL requests, freedom of information requests. Uh, your thoughts there? Uh, well, my thoughts are that this, you know, this really allows people to go after <clears throat> corrections officers, firefighters, and police officers uh, very unfairly. We already have provisions in the last Criminal Justice Reform Act that allowed um, us and, and made police officers uh, subject to release of their disciplinary records that, that contributed to their or would influence how a jury would view their credibility. And that's the important part. That's why if they did things that are dishonest or something like that, we should turn them over because those kinds of things can influence how a criminal case is handled. And with this situation, now anybody who wants to find out about any police officer's history can file a FOIL request and get this information. Information about you know, whether they turned in a dirty police car or were late for work three times uh, or had you know jelly on their uniform at, at a formal function or something like that, that. That could get them written up because they live in a very, very strict world, but has absolutely nothing to do with their capacity to be police officers, how they treat the public, or anything else. It allows them to sort of fish around in anybody's history and, and find embarrassing facts and then published on the internet or, or use against people. Uh, I don't know that anybody would want their personal records in their life open up like that, particularly those who serve us and put their lives in line for us every day. It just makes no sense. Governor Andrew Cuomo seems to uh, take criticism well from upstate uh, Republican lawmakers. Do you think there's any chance that something like that, that the governor will, uh, oh, I don't know, veto or uh, eventually uh, change? Because We've seen that through, through the whole COVID thing that he is sub. When he's subject to criticism, he he will sometimes make a change in something. Sure, and we've seen a little bit of back off on bail reform as well. But I, I don't know. He said he will sign this bill. You know, it's uh, it's very this kind of stuff is very popular with uh, the the Democratic majority right now, the downstate cadre that's essentially running our state. And, um, you know, unless uh, maybe with some, some help from our legislators, uh, and, and in particular, he's disturbing some, he's going to be upsetting some very powerful and important unions, our law enforcement unions, our PBA, our firemen, uh, our corrections officers, you know, that there might be enough pushback to get him to back off on this at some point. You know, it, it may make sense to allow people to look at, you know, <clears throat> disciplinary records that, that pertain to violent acts against the public or things of that nature. Uh, for police discipline or, or those kinds of things, but to open up the entire record that they can have even the most mild and, and, and innocuous violations of office policy. You know, they use too many sheets of paper or copied on, on one side instead of two that gets people written up in the law enforcement field just makes absolutely no sense. I, but right now I don't have much hope of our governor doing the right thing at all, so I kind of doubt that, that there'll be a whole lot of traction because this is popular with the folks he wants to vote for him. Yeah, I can see some obnoxious things happening with that. Somebody gets pulled over for a speeding ticket. They didn't agree with it. They lose in court, and then they go out and uh, and foil these and then spread the, the information around. You know, that kind of I, I say that aware that I don't want to trigger anything out there with the audience. I think with this particular audience here on WLEA, uh, the average listener is not going to be in that situation, A. And, B, they wouldn't do that kind of thing. But... Are you a little fearful of something like that, Brooks Baker? Well, I'm even more fearful of, of the neighborhood dispute. You know, you, you and your neighbor argue over where the line is or whose kid threw a baseball into whose backyard, and your neighbor's a police officer. Uh, you can then go and, and go through disciplinary records, and that ends up on Facebook. I mean, it, it, it allows for vindictive use of this material when it shouldn't be. I mean, if, if, if this material needs to be used in a criminal case, uh, and we've sort of argued about that, but it, it impairs somebody's credibility. There's already a mechanism for that. It's it's in the law uh, to to open up someone's entire 
personnel file, essentially, uh, to anybody who wants to see it under FOIL and say you can do with it whatever you want once it gets into the public eye is simply unfair. It doesn't apply to anybody else. It doesn't apply to the governor. It doesn't apply to legislators. Uh, it doesn't apply to anybody in the private sector. So uh, to, to create this special class of opening up disciplinary records just for those who protect and service is, is simply unfair and wrong and, and creates a capacity for abuse that is essentially unchecked by the law. Speaking with Superman County District Attorney Brooks Baker, the next one is the right to record uh, police activity. That would be what mostly arrests, uh, Brooks Baker. Well, that would be arrests, or if uh, you know, um, you're watching the, uh, the police uh, provide security at a at a parade or something of that nature. You know, this is essentially window dressing. I mean, it's it makes some people happy to hear it, but the reality is, people already have that right. If you want to record something which is happening in the public. Uh, in the public view, you have an absolute right to do that. So, and people do do it on a regular basis. We see lots of these videos, uh, and we see people right now, given the current culture, uh, all of our police officers are used to the idea of seeing uh, being recorded when they work because that's what happens uh, all the time. And this doesn't really do anything except tell folks that they have a right they already had. Uh, the limitation here in the, in the law is the same as the current limitation in the law. You cannot even if you're recording and you've got your right to record, you cannot interfere with a police officer's arrest and, um, or, or his lawful duties. Those are crimes. So if you, you know, your right to record does not trump the right to uh, the police officer to do his duty or make an arrest. And, and that's set forth in the law. So this one doesn't accomplish very much at all, except obviously placate some, some a special interest group who wanted to have this, in the law to throw around out there, but police officers right now allow people because they're supposed to. That's what the law is. You can record anything that's happening in public. This next one is the Eric Garner Anti Chokehold Act, prohibiting the use of uh, chokeholds and establishing the crime of aggravated strangulation as a Class C felony. Your take on this one? Well, you know, my take on this one is it's, it's extremely dangerous because of the collection of things it, it does here. Um, you know, for the most part, current law enforcement training does not involve the use of chokeholds. I mean, they are, they are trained in self-defense and to use certain mechanisms in self-defense when they are attacked, but the, the chokehold process is something that's being sort of trained out of law enforcement and has been over the past you know, several years based upon some things that have happened and, and, and modernization of, of techniques for subduing people. So, you know, chokeholds are being done away with. Uh, however, we, you know, we, we sort of forget when in, in the, you know, bright lights of, a, of an Albany uh, press room that police officers often end up fighting for their lives, uh, particularly here in Stuben County, on a dark road half an hour from help. Uh, and if during that process, you know, a chokehold gets employed because that's the only way to avoid death or serious physical injury, to, to put this, this kind of a bill forward, uh, that doesn't require intent to injure, that doesn't require anything except being a police officer, causing an injury and, and the relatively low threshold for strangulation, which means any interference with someone's ability to breathe and, and make a Class C violent felony, which could put somebody in jail for up to 15 years because they employed a hold in an effort to save their lives and protect the public, is, is dangerous. It absolutely is, is insane. Um, it puts officers in a position where uh, they have a choice between you know, protecting the public and saving their own life in, in these situations when this kind of a hold would be used and in uh, and going to prison for a very long time and committing a crime. It really doesn't make any sense whatsoever. You know, right now, police officers always remain subject to the penal law. Uh, that's the reality is you know, they, they have no rights and privileges beyond the use of reasonable physical force uh, in an arrest. So if a police officer goes too far in the arrest process, he can and, and, and would be charged with a crime of assault. And there's plenty of provisions in the penal law to take care of that, and they are used when officers step over the line and do the wrong thing for the wrong reason. Uh, but to create a situation where uh, there's almost instant liability um, and apply it to what, what, what are largely life and death situations for a police officer is just fundamentally unfair. We are treating police officers as a special class of people uh, who have more liability, uh, not less, uh, and who are more apt to be charged for doing less 
uh, and when they are doing it either to, to save their own lives or to protect the public. So this kind of a law just doesn't make any sense. Uh, the idea of prohibiting a chokehold as part of regular office policy and enforcement of, of, um, of the law makes sense. And I think most, if you ask you know, our sheriff or most of our uh, police chiefs, this is, this is being trained out of police across the board. The only time it comes into effect is when it's, when it's a life or death or, or you or me situation and police officers are doing what they can to survive and, and, or, and or protect the public. And to, to, to have them facing a Class C violent felony, uh, they could put them in prison for a very long time. Uh, and, and that part of the, the math in their head is they're trying to protect us. It makes no sense. We're speaking with Sioux County District Attorney Brooks Baker, uh, and we're going over an article uh, from the Syracuse Post about the 10 uh, legislative uh, uh, actions that the uh, state legislature is taking, and it says here uh, that they passed these in three days this past week. I'm not sure if the governor signed these yet. I haven't seen anything on that yet. Next one is called the uh, Police Statistics and Transparency Act that will require courts to compile and publish, publish racial and other democratic data of all low-level offenses, including misdemeanors and violations. Your thoughts there, Brooks Baker? You know, knowing more is always better. Information is never a bad thing. So to have somebody collect this information, I think, quite frankly, it would. If people actually pay attention to it, it could be very, very educational because a lot of the claims that are being made out right now about um, racial profiling and about uh, unfair activity by police officers across the board are not borne out by the national crime statistics we're seeing. Um, you know, things published by the Washington Post, who is the, I think, the most. Uh, the largest repository and my most famous for publishing these things, you know, don't bear out a lot of the claims about law offices being uh, across the board, racially profiling or systematic racism or, or, or any of those claims that are being made. I mean, bad things happen. I'm not going to uh, you know, run away from that fact. But the reality is the systematic program, which is being exposed by a bunch of folks, um, you know, who are currently in power in Albany and other places, is is absolutely inconsistent with the realities that we're seeing in, in, in national statistics. So if we keep these, these numbers, I think, quite frankly, that could be a good thing. Uh, the more we know, the more we will see, and I think the more people will see that our police officers are doing what they are supposed to do and, and that they aren't targeting anybody. And, quite frankly, if they find out that from these numbers an agency is targeting or there are officers who are targeting, then, then they shouldn't be police officers and they'll be removed. So... Uh, again, information and more information is never a bad thing. Now, how well it will be kept, uh, what it will be used for, and uh, what the classifications are, that's another issue. Uh, oftentimes, the answer you get depends upon the question you ask. And my hope is that uh, whoever keeps these statistics, and I think it's supposed to be the Office of Court Administration, uh, will do so in a fair and impartial manner and will be asking the right question. Uh, yeah. We're speaking with Stupin County District Attorney uh, Brooks Baker. Um, next one is, it says, stemming 911 calls based on race. It says it establishes, this is kind of legalese here, so uh, we'll need uh, Brooks Baker's uh, legal brains here on this one, a legal knowledge on this one, I should say. This establishes a private right of action. For a member of a protected class, when another person summons a police officer or a peace officer on them without reason uh, to suspect a crime or threat existed, and I think what they mean is when the threat does not exist. Correct. And I think this is, this is not a criminal statute. This, this creates a civil cause of action. So someone could sue someone else for money if they breach that statute. That's what this means. Now, I think this, this sort of responds to that Central Park situation where the... Right. Uh, the the bird watcher with a Harvard degree was was out, uh, and a woman was had her dog on. Uh, uh, he was a black man, uh, and a white woman had her dog off her leash, and he was taking issue with her, and she called the police and said she was being threatened by a black man, um, and 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 she was not. And that there was a lot of uproar. He had to deal with the police, and and it, it wasn't the right thing. I mean, she made a, a choice um, to to use race for the wrong reason, and that's that's I think that that's in this is in response to that. So it allows, uh, basically, it's for the false 911 caller. And I, 
you know, police deal with enough real emergencies that anybody who makes a false call to 911 can be subject to a crime. If you falsely report an incident, uh, this same person could be charged with falsely reporting an incident. If they simply say because some person is, is black uh, or if they are part of another protected class uh, by either uh, they're calling because of their race or sexual orientation, um, the way they look, anything that puts them in a protected class and says that this person in this protected class is, is committing a crime against me just because they don't like that class. Um, one, it's false reporting. It's, it's a crime, and it's wrong. Uh, this, I think there was probably the ability to, to sue them anyway. This just makes it more clear. So this is sort of a lot like the, um, the right to record law. There was already a cause of action out there. Uh, you just had to phrase it differently. This just creates a more uh, specific declaration of that right. And this is something that if people are doing the wrong thing. They can be sued civilly and charged criminally. There's nothing really to do about that. We're going to take a quick break and we come back. We'll finish up on uh, Brooks Baker reviewing these uh, new laws that are being signed likely uh, today or tomorrow by Governor Andrew Cuomo. Stay with us. Selecting a nursing home for a loved one isn't easy until you've discovered Hornell Gardens Nursing and Rehabilitation. Hornell Gardens delivers the highest level of care, compassion, and commitment with amenities and activities that will enrich body, mind, and spirit. It's a place that's close to home. Stop in for a tour of Hornell Gardens located at 434 Monroe Avenue in Hornell or to learn more, call 585-222-CARE or visit hurlbutcare.com. Sports Auto Collision. Hi, Bill. Never seen an insurance job. We both can't make money on yet. Bill? And yes, I still have a free loaner car. Uh, Bill, I, I just called to... Uh... Sports Auto Collision, Day Route 36, South Canis Steel, 698-9900. Online at McCourtsCollision.com. Bill, for the first time in my life, you have left me speechless. I am Bill McCourt. Wow. Back with Superman County District Attorney Brooks Baker. I'm going to skip ahead. I, I will get back to uh, a couple of other ones, uh, but I'm skipping ahead in the list here of these new laws being passed this week. Creating a special office of investigation for police-related deaths. Uh, you know, that one is, is disturbing. There was already an executive order governing this um, that said that if there was any um, death of an unarmed citizen at the hands of the uh, at the hands of the police, that the attorney general has special authority to handle that case and takes it away. So, uh, you know, for, for the cases involving an unarmed person, uh, that has always been dealt with by the attorney general's office. And um, this this doesn't do anything with those cases, and those are the most disturbing cases. Now, what this does is it takes the authority away from district attorneys across the state to handle those cases where there is armed conflict between a police officer uh, and, and, um, and someone else. And that's, uh, you know, one, constitutionally, that was traditionally a role for the district attorney to make, uh, present a case to a grand jury and decide whether, and let the grand jury decide and go forward with these situations. The idea that this will now be turned over to some special person in Albany uh, who will have, you know, whatever political agenda is popular that day and whatever political goals to go forward and put police officers' lives uh, in that context and in, in sort of subject to the the political whims of the day is very scary. Uh, that's not, um, it, it treats them differently than, than other citizens, and it puts them uh, at a level of risk in those most dangerous situations. There's always that doubt in the back of their mind, okay, if, if I do this to protect myself or someone or, or another citizen and take whatever steps there are to use lethal force, Am I going to get charged by somebody who's not from my community, who doesn't know what happened, and may have a political agenda that says they want X number of scalps on the wall to move up to the next office? Uh, that You hate to be that skeptical about uh, what happens in Albany, but given what's happened in recent years, I think that worry should be there for all police officers. Uh, there, there was a commission. The attorney general does take these cases at the governor's direction. If it's an unarmed person, and those are the cases we worry most about, that's the Floyd case. That's all of these cases that make the papers where an unarmed person dies in, during a police interaction. Those cases were handled by the Attorney General Office. There are very, very few of those cases every year. There are also precious few cases where someone is, is uh, killed in an armed conflict, uh, but those cases have been handled by district attorneys until now. Uh, and, uh, again, it's just the fact that, that these politically charged and difficult situations will be made by a political appointee, not someone elected by the people, is very scary. 
There's another office they want to create, a misconduct investigative office. Uh, would, would this be something out of Albany, District Attorney Brooks Baker, or would this be uh, a new committee set up everywhere to monitor police? And no, this is another Albany creature. Uh, I think it's, I believe from what I've read, it'll be, it'll be housed at the Attorney General's office. Uh, and it, it, again, this is another very disturbing thing where police officers are being treated differently. The penal law applies to police officers. If they break the law, they, they are charged and they are, they are held accountable. Uh, this creates a situation where, again, another entity out of Albany with political appointees, not those uh, chosen by the people to make choices about what should happen in criminal cases, overlook police officers, and they get a different level of scrutiny than anybody else. It's sort of a special collection of law enforcement, a special system for police officers, and that's simply not fair. Uh, and again, it's one that is so subject to the political you know, wins in Albany at a given time. Who, who wants to have, see what happened, um, you know, what happens, uh, what, what, what message do they want to send to people downstate, what message do they want to send to people upstate. It may have absolutely no, nothing to do with what police officers actually do. Uh, it empowers every defendant who is charged to make an accusation, be it true or false, and, and subject a police officer to an investigation for their conduct. Uh, that's simply wrong. Uh, that's, you know, when, when police officer does the wrong thing and a complaint is made, it's investigated. And I can tell you those investigations are some of the most intense that we are ever involved with. They are the most thorough we are ever involved with. Uh, and sometimes they come out on the right side for a police officer, and sometimes they don't. But in this situation, it, it empowers the person who was accused of a crime or has any issue at all with a police officer, doesn't like the way they handled a crime, uh, to go out uh, and make this accusation to this collection of folks in Albany, again, who want to get X number of scalps on the wall so they can move up to the next office. And um, it puts police officers in a situation where they, there's a special system with less protections for them uh, than there is for anybody else. And that's just, again, it's the wrong thing to do. It's the wrong message to send. It's, it's part of this whole Albany culture that started with criminal justice reform that's empowering defendants and handcuffing police officers and making our community less safe. Down to the last minute and a half here with Brooks Baker. Uh, the last one I think we'll have time for is uh, reporting police involved shootings within six hours. Do you think that's reasonable or unreasonable? Your thoughts there, Brooks Baker? Uh, that's reasonable. I, I cannot. It, it's hard to believe that there would ever be a police involved shooting that isn't reported in six hours. I mean, I think um, you know, we, we haven't had a police involved shooting here in Stephen County in a very long time, but I know that when they, when they do happen, police officers call it in 911 to their supervisor immediately. So this is sort of a non-issue. Again, kind of more window dressing. Police, nobody doesn't report a police-involved shooting. That's just, that's, that's, that's contrary to policy any place. So there's nothing, no real value to this one. And we're down to less than 60 seconds now, requiring New York State police, state troopers to wear body cameras. Your thoughts on that one? Quite frankly, I think it's great. I mean, our local agencies are picking them up. Uh, the Sheriff's Department has them. Um, I know that when LPD is looking at them, Corning PD has them. Uh, traditionally, body cameras protect police officers. Uh, that's, that's a reality uh, because it shows they're doing the right thing. So I have no problem with that at all. Stupid County District Attorney Brooks Baker, I want to thank you uh, so much for uh, coming on today. No problem, Brian. Always great to be with you. Thank you very much, Brooks Baker. It's AM 1480 WLEA Hornell, also now heard on uh, 1069 FM. We're going to check in with Fox, and then we'll hear from uh, Dr. Robert Heineman.